Welcome to Awakening Moments with Angie. My name is Angie Donju. I'm a spiritual consultant. I also work with um, healing modalities and I am a hypnotist. Um, I came here to LCAT uh, in order to bring out some information for public uh, in regards to healing, in regards to uh, meditating, releasing anxiety, stress, tension, and also to explore some of the other techniques that are around here that, is, that are available to people in regards to maintaining their health and wellness through mind, body, and spirit. Uh, so this program will have a series of programs and each one will have a little bit on some of the modalities that we utilize and some of the techniques that we use. Um, and I, you know, I want to make sure that everybody realizes that you can have your doctors, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a great thing to make sure that you have your balance. Make sure that you have your doctors, make sure that you have um, all of your physical therapists, even emotional um, health, health workers. These are all important to your basic balance of your body, mind, and spirit. Um, I'm also going to be working in regards to bringing you guest speakers here in order to understand and look at different aspects of metaphysical, psychic, holistic, all types of different pieces that form a community of well-being. Okay, I myself, I have been a meditation counselor um, since, my, since I was about 20 years old. I've been held, holding on to that for many years. I also am a hypnotist um, who I also bring in some information for people so that they can help themselves to release some of the anxiety and stress that they might have through hypnosis in regards to anything that might be from their past life, anything that might be from the moment now, um, letting go of items that are no longer necessary to carry. Because what we do a lot of times as individuals is we carry things forward, we keep them alive. And by keeping them alive, we're not really releasing them. And if we don't release them, then they stay in our body and they start to cause issues with our mental, emotional, and physical aspects of us. So what I'm going to start with today is a brief discussion on what we call the chakra system. And I want to let everybody know that that's, that's spelled C-H-A-K-R-A, -A, chakra. You can look this up on the computer. There's many different sources where you can see more information about the chakras. Um, I myself actually work with helping people to clear and cleanse their chakras at my, um, my center, which is the Awakening Moment Center. I'm located in Raymond, New Hampshire. So I'm gonna start out with the chakras and then I'm gonna go back into a brief meditation with the chakras. So beginning right now, I'm going to show you a little chart of the chakra systems which you will see on your screen as I go through all of the different pieces and elements of the chakra system in our bodies. And we actually start out by saying it's spiritual energy organs that are within us. They relate to our physical and mental and emotional body. They're part of our spiritual reflex. Um, they were also esoteric meanings. They denote a wheel of becoming. It is used to refer to a circle to initiate a tetranic ritual. A diagram used to determine the right kind of mantra for a particular situation or student. So when you hear the word chakra, you might hear it in other symbolisms. One of the things that we work with the chakras with is um, in yoga, when people practice yoga, they actually work with the chakra system as well. Um, I'm gonna say that there's seven basic chakras, and if you look at the chart that's in front of you on the screen, you're gonna see that 
It starts from the base, which is at the pubic area, and it goes all the way up to the head. And the base starts with red, and then you see orange, then yellow, then green, then it goes to blue, an indigo purple, and white or a very strong purple on the top of the head. These are your basic seven chakras. And I'm gonna to start today with the first chakra, which is the one that is found right at your pelvic bone. And this first chakra is your base or root chakra. We um, tend to overstress our base chakra when we allow ourselves to not play in the world. The fields are here. We have beautiful fields that are there for playing, getting next to earth. We are on an earthly journey. And so allow yourself to play on that earthly journey. Uh, this is part of keeping your balance with that chakra. And that chakra actually is part of our system because it helps us to balance, stay balanced between our spiritual and our earthly journeys. It also helps us to find strength and energy to know that we can move forward and do things on a general basis. We don't always have to be with the earth. We don't always have to be with the spiritual. We can live, we can balance, we can allow ourselves to enjoy life. So when you look at this, the base chakra, it is almost like you're looking at something that is really keeping you balanced. So what is that gonna affect? Uh, people with arthritis might have some mess up with the base chakra. People who might have some bone issues. People who don't feel that they belong on the earth plane. All of these pieces reflect issues with the base chakra. And they can be helpful and beneficial to work on them because that brings you to a space of knowing that you're in balance with that. And so when we work with that in the medical world and the physical therapist, we actually are doing the whole entire piece of this. And by doing the whole entire piece of this, we're actually allowing ourselves to balance out the root chakra. So um, have some fun, enjoy the earth. Even if it's just going out and dancing or dancing in your kitchen, feel your feet on the ground and enjoy, because this will help you to maintain that balance so that the medications and the instructions that you're working with will all come together along with the spiritual piece of reflecting upon that chakra. The next chakra I want to look into is, it's the, um, the second chakra is the sacral or the navel chakra. Uh, this is right where the belly button is. <laughs> and uh, everybody kind of gets a cute little quip out of that one because it has to do with sexuality and sexual organs. And it also has to do with self-esteem and awareness of self. Um, so this gets depleted when somebody is constantly telling you that you're not good enough or you yourself have been exposed to so much negativity that you have decided and determined that you're not worthy. <laughs> Stop being that way. Allow yourself to see the worth in you. Explore yourself. Check out and see what you actually do for the people around you. And you're, I'm sure you will find plenty that you actually do for people. Whether it be just making a meal for them, uh, maybe just being a companion for them, or perhaps you go off and do extreme work for people. Whatever it is and whatever, uh, whatever you partake, know that you are part of that energy, okay? Uh, when we work with this second chakra, it of course, like they stated, it, uh, it messes up the sexuality, it messes up on the balance of the hormones, it messes up on things like menstrual cycles um, and those types of issues. Anything that has to do with the sexual production organs. 
could actually even mess up on the ability to conceive. So um, the best way to get this resolved is to allow yourself to find your worth. If somebody keeps being um, and exposing you to negativity, release it, walk away from it. Don't be exploited by it. Know your worth. Know that you are a part of God. You are a part of creation. And that alone can bring you that joy of saying, I am here for a purpose. I am here for a reason. Once you start to allow yourself to flourish and allow yourself to become seen, um, you'll see a big difference. This too can be messed up if somebody's constantly making sure that they look exactly perfect, constantly wanting to be in perfection, okay? When you get to be too perfect, you kind of get away from that balance as well. So there is a, you know, if I have a huge ego, I still can mess up my second chakra. So please keep that in mind. There is a balance to this. And once you start to find these balances, then you'll start to see that the medical, emotional, um, physical healing that's going on with you will actually start to work more efficiently. Okay, so enjoy yourself. Have some fun. See yourself glamorous or get yourself a little bit dirty and back to the earth energies. And then we go on to the third chakra, which is a very important chakra. It's your solar plexus chakra. And if you notice, it's right below the sternum. It's right where your, your, um, your chest cavity is. So that is a very important chakra because it brings out all your creativity. Um, you can get your creativity depleted. Um, there's a lot of things that come at you when you're working with that chakra. And you have to remember when you're standing there in front of people and they're giving you all kinds of negativity, it's actually coming in at that port. It's one of the major places where a lot of negative negativity can come through. Uh, so it's very important that you protect yourself from that. If somebody tells you that they want to report on the desk at five o'clock in the afternoon and you know that you have more to do with that report, all right, um, just talk to them and say, you know, I, I can do a better job if you give me a few more minutes or could I possibly do this at 530? Because that allows you to put that creativity into it that you really want to bring out. And by depleting yourself from not doing that creativity so that you make that, that moment of time um, depletes your chakra, you deplete your creativity. Or if somebody's harping on you all the time, that no, no, it doesn't matter how it looks, so you just gotta get it done. No, that's your talent, that's your initiative. Don't let anybody take that away from you. Plan out something in a positive way of how we can come to a, a, you know, a situation where everything is like for everybody's good. And as you start to work with speaking that truth, you'll start to find that the things that are bothering you may very well be corrected. Things that might bother you from the solar plexus are very important. There's stomach issues, gallbladders, acid reflux, to name a few. Um, if you've been having issues with constant acid reflux, try to allow yourself to be more creative or don't be so creative. Allow yourself to step back a bit because that will balance you out. And at the same time, don't forget, you do need your medications. You do need a doctor's advice. You do need those physical, mental, and emotional pieces all together. So as you're going through this routine, you'll see that you'll release some of the acid reflux. You'll release some of the issues with your stomach by only allowing yourself to change a little bit of your creativity. Allowing yourself to be you, to show and explore and venture. 
And then we go up to the next chakra, which is the heart chakra. And the heart chakra is all about love. It's all about giving and taking. <laughs> you know, how many times have you done something for somebody and then they give you something in return and you're like, oh, no, no, I can't take that. It's a nice exchange. Instead of saying, no, 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 I can't take that, allow yourself to receive. Because if you keep giving, 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 and you never receive, you're holding back. You're giving yourself, like, you're not allowing yourself to receive. You're not allowing yourself to flow. So it's, that's basically what goes on with the heart chakra. It's a matter of give and take. Do I give too much? Do I receive too much? Where am I with that? If you find yourself on one of those sides, start to get it kind of, you know, get, get it together a little bit. Give more, receive more, whichever needs to be done. Uh, the heart chakra is actually very important as well. It works with anything that has to do with blood flow. That can be from blood pressure to heart issues um, to depression because you're not allowing yourself to be in the moment and be worthy of yourself. Okay, so work with that and allow yourself to balance out what you give and what you receive, all right? It doesn't really matter who's giving what or who's, it's a matter of let's all do this together. Let's help each other. And as we find that, we see that we are in a much better position with our heart. And as I move up the road, we're going to go into the throat chakra. And the throat chakra, which is very um, important, too, because it's speaking a truth. I will say one thing, if nothing else out of this whole day, if you do not speak your truth and you keep biting your tongue, allow yourself to speak your truth. It doesn't hurt to say the truth. If you find yourself speaking too much of the truth and offending others because you're too abrasive, it doesn't hurt to cut back a bit. Be conscious and aware of how you utilize your voice. Am I too, am I too abrasive or do I bite my tongue and sit back and, and let something go on without speaking my truth? These are very important. Primarily because you have to have a balance with that too. And the throat chakra is all about anything to do with sinus, anything to do with lungs, anything to do with the breathing of your air. Um, very important part of our function is taking in air. That is a part of our life flow. So as you go on and try to correct issues of perhaps allergies, sinus infections, um, different types of issues with your lungs. Give thought to how you're speaking and start to correct it if you see that it's a little off. But remember, again, keep going with your meds, keep going with the advice you're receiving from doctors because all of it works together. It's not a one-piece show. All right. And the next one that's shown up there is the purple, the third eye chakra, which is right above your eyes on your forehead. This is an important chakra because we, and as much as anybody may disagree with this, I will say to you, I've been working with people and developing intuitiveness for over 20 years, actually over 30. We all are intuitive. We all have some intuitiveness with us. It's a decision of whether we want to utilize it or whether we just want to let it sleep. But everybody has opportunities to have intuitive abilities. Some people have too much and those people are the ones that, oh, I have to see my horoscope every single morning. Oh, I've got to pull a card before I go to do this job to see if it's going to work right. Oh, I got to, you know, Take it, I have to find somebody to tell me if this is going to work out all right. If you're constantly looking for knowledge of what's going to happen, that's way too much. You've got to close it down. If you're never, ever paying attention, 
let's say you have an, a, a feeling like um, you're on the road and you look and say, oh, I don't know why, but I don't feel like I should take Elm Street today. I should take the other route. Um, but then you don't listen to that feeling that you have, that gut feeling that's telling you to take this other route. And you take Elm Street, and guess what? You're stuck in traffic because there has been occurrence of an issue on Elm Street, and so now you're just stuck there. Had you been listening and feeling and sensing, then you would have avoided the whole entire situation. These things occur. And if you ever notice, and most of us notice it after the fact, because it's usually when we've kind of found ourselves saying, oh, that's funny. How come I didn't go my regular route today? I don't understand why I did that. And that's when it's going to like, and then you hear the news maybe an hour later and you're like, oh my goodness, if I had gone that way, I would have been stuck in all that traffic. That's, that's just like a, a way of showing you that information. But um, as you go on, um, you know, pe be aware. Have a little bit of awareness. That doesn't mean to, to have, don't do, you know, don't, it's like do not hold yourself back from doing things in life because, oh, a car just turned and said that it's going to be like this. No, you, you have to keep moving forward. It's your journey. Um, don't always rely on something that you see or something that you're feeling in that sense. But on occasion, when you're very lost, it's fine to look for that guidance. That's why your spirits and your angels are there to assist you. So now we're coming up to the crown chakra, which is right above our head. And that chakra is a very important chakra because it brings in all of our influx to all of the chakras that are below. And it's a flow. This, this energy flows sideways, front to back. Um, it's circular. It's scattered, but it's always energy. And it's an energy port that we have. So that crown chakra is actually bringing in the divine energy, the knowledge of being in the heavens, the knowledge of being spacey, let's say. We don't want to be a part of the world. It's like you watch the girl that's running through this place and she's got her butterfly net and she's off and running on her own. That's what that's all about, getting away from the moment, getting away from the earthly planes. We can't be there all the time. If we are there all the time, then we miss some of our earthly journey, most of it. So don't sit there and allow yourself to always be in that moment of, I have to be in meditation, I have to be um, in prayer, I have to be um, giving thought to all the creatures of the world and, and all the heavens around me. It's good to do that. You need that. You need to allow yourself to be free in the nature of things. However, don't get trapped into being there all the time because you do have, you're on this earth for a purpose and your purpose is to live it, live the life that you have around you and experience the journeys that are there for you to fulfill. So, as you see, we've just gone through the seven chakras. Um, by the way, I will mention to you that one thing I forgot to say is that on the third eye chakra, which is the one on the forehead, you um, can actually have issues with your mind, remembering, um, keeping things afloat, if you don't have that imbalance. And as far as the crown chakra, it's very similar. It has a lot to do with your potential with your brain. It's a lot to do with being very like, like away from the world, just kind of lost in a daydream, okay? That's not where you really want to be. But again, if you do have some issues with your mind, with your head, um, make sure that you are seeing people that can help you and assist you because the medical field is there for that. This isn't a fix-all. It's a part of your system. So we have a part of the system that we, we can use here 
Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy to say that I hope that you look into more of the chakra system. Check it out online. Look into it deeper. I just touched base with it. If you're interested in some more information on the chakra system, um, I'm available all the time at um, the Awakening Moment Center in Raymond, New Hampshire. You can give me a call. I'm sure that the numbers will be on the screen as well as my email. So just keep that in mind. If you need somebody to talk to, if you want to um, pursue fixing them more, let me know. Next thing I want to go into though is a little treat. I am actually going to do a little bit of meditation time with you in these sessions. This is guided meditations. And so this one that we do today is a very simple, simple meditation. Okay. Um, you, and any meditations we do, you cannot do any wrong. You go with the flow. If you're not getting through into the full guided meditation, just be in peace. That's all that matters. Um, just receiving that little time of peace is better than none. So in this guided meditation, I am going to start by asking everyone that is watching to just take a moment to close your eyes and give thought to a rainbow. Whether you're visualizing it, whether you're feeling it, whether you're sensing it, allow the rainbow to be what it is. It can have all the colors, it can have no colors, it can have just a couple colors. Whatever the colors are, observe them. Notice which ones are, are, have more color to them. Notice the ones that are, might be missing. Of course, the rainbow colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white, indigo sometimes black. And after you've been with your rainbow for a few moments, I just want you to open your eyes. And you might want to jot down what you just saw for a rainbow. Because you may want to do this again sometime in the near future. And you might want to journal it. Journaling is always good. It helps us to see things and realize things more efficiently. So as you look at this rainbow, or you give thought to this rainbow, just kind of notice the colors, perhaps the colors that are missing, the colors that are the brightest. Generally speaking, when there's missing colors, it generally will coincide with the chakras. And as you look on that body, the base is red, the navel chakra is orange, the solar plexus is yellow, the heart is green, the throat is blue, the third eye is indigo purple, and the crown is white or a, a deeper purple. A lot of times people will be able to acknowledge that they are lacking or they're unbalanced in one of those chakras by the rainbow that they just saw in their thoughts, in their imaginations. So right now I'm gonna ask everybody to get ready to go into a deeper meditation and I'm just going to ask everybody to take a nice deep breath and exhale. And if you'd like, you can close your eyes. Taking a nice deep breath. Exhaling, releasing all the thoughts and worries of the day. Breathing in, and as you breathe in, allowing yourself to relax your head and your neck your shoulders, breathing in and exhaling, 
as you release your arms and your hands, allowing waves of relaxation to go all the way down through your torso into your hips, feeling relaxation, releasing anything from the day, the week, the month that you no longer need to worry about at this moment. Purge it, leave it, let it be. You'll have plenty of time to go back to it. Just be in this moment, feeling the relaxation swirling down through your body, into your hips and all the way down through your legs, through your feet, down into the earth. Taking in a nice deep breath of white energy and releasing and exhaling all the negativities. And if you wish, you can take one more nice deep breath. And exhale and release all the worries, thoughts. And if any come through, just let them swirl through and leave your mind. Now that you're starting to feel more relaxed, I'd like you to give thought to one of the colors that was missing from your rainbow. And I'd like you to just take a nice deep breath and feel that color enter you, go through you, surround you, whatever way that you feel or visualize or sense it. Just let that color penetrate through you, going wherever it needs to go, not worrying about where it's going, just letting it go anywhere it needs to go. And now I'd like you to concentrate on a different color that might have been missing or very light in your rainbow. And allow that color to come in. Breathing in and allowing that color to be absorbed all the way through your body, all the way surrounding your body, swirling around you, swirling within you, going to wherever it needs to go. No thoughts, no worries, no concerns. Just let it go where it goes. If you happen to have a third color that you'd like to include, please do it. Please put it through you at this time. Bringing it in, letting it swirl through you, going to where it needs to go. And as these colors swirl through you and go to where they need to go, allow yourself to just be in relaxation, feeling peace, feeling calm. swirls of comfort all the way down through your toes being in the moment And now that we have sat in this beautiful energy for a few moments, I'd like you to bring in a beautiful flow of white energy. We're just gonna swirl from your crown chakra above your head all the way down through your base into your feet down below the earth. Feeling the swirl go down through you as you breathe in Exhaling out and releasing all the colors that you have been absorbing. Breathing in the beautiful, strong, white energy. 
exhaling out all the colors, releasing any negative feelings, releasing any pressure or pain. Breathing normally. Allowing yourself to send energy all the way down through your breath, through your entire body to your feet, down into the earth to ground you. Feel yourself connecting to the earth. Feel the balance that surrounds you. Once again, a nice deep breath to allow yourself to ground into the earth, exhaling, feeling all the comfort and the peace that now surrounds you. Know that you can come in back into this position and allow yourself to take in these beautiful colors and feel this relaxation and this release at any time, just as we have just done. And now allowing yourself to start moving your head and your neck, feeling your shoulders, your arms, returning back to the room, feeling your outer extremities Maybe moving your feet, your toes. Now totally returning with your eyes open to the moment of now in your space. So I have given you a few moments to return back into this space. I hope that you all enjoyed or got some pleasure from that meditative moment that we just went through. And I hope that you allow yourself to go into this moment on your own to help you to balance, to feel less anxiety, less stress, just to refurbish for maybe a long day or a long night. This is only one of the meditations that we'll be doing in the series of meditation and all of these guidance that we'll be doing in the future. I hope that you all enjoyed your time here today. And I hope that you all allow yourselves to go into that awakening of how important it is for your spirit, your mind, and your body to connect. Remember the importance of allowing your spiritual as well as your body, mind and spirit to all work together to allow you to release anxieties, to allow you to um, enjoy more time on your earthly journey. Um, we will have more topics in this respect. We'll also have more guests that will be here discussing some of their ways of bringing around that balance for you. And I hope that you take advantage of these short sessions that we are going to be holding. Uh, again, I have been doing this for over 30 years. I am of the positive light. I do feel the need for all of us as a, to become more communicative and our needs and our wants, our worries and our fears, so that we can come to balance. This is a time for us to all grow in that spiritual peace, but also to grow in our body and mind as well. So please make sure you take the time not to just be working all the time or worrying or being concerned all the time, but take the time to find the relaxation that surrounds you to link up with your family, to link up 
with those that surround you that you may not have seen for a while. Allow yourself to grow. Allow yourself to enjoy every awakening moment as you go through your earthly journey. I am glad that you are with me today. I thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Have a great evening, day, whatever is in front of you. But remember, you are the most important person. So allow yourself to receive before you give. Thank you. And goodbye for now.